Callum Harvey Scholes is an energy policy research specialist living on Darawal country in Australia. He began in the energy sector delivering home energy upgrades including rooftop solar, batteries and heat pumps. Within the energy policy group at the University of Exeter, Callum led research projects which influenced energy policy change across the UK and European countries. Before joining Rewiring Australia in 2024, Callum led policy development and change projects at Solar Victoria, such as designing the Solar for Apartments program and changes to installer accreditation. Outside work, you will find Callum contributing to community campaigns pushing for clean energy across the Illawarra or out in the bush with his tent. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Uh, it's really great to be here. Thanks for the invitation and to the team for running this fantastic event. I'm Callum. I'm, I'm joining from Darawal country down in New South Wales, Australia. Um, I work for Rewiring Australia. Um, for those who don't know, we're, we're a non-profit research and advocacy organisation. We launched in 2021 uh, by Dr. Saul Griffith following his success in, in the US actually gearing their Inflation Reduction Act towards household electrification. And based on that work, demonstrating the value uh, in household electrification, both in terms of emissions reduction and in terms of saving people money, um, the economics, we're, we're now busy making that case for electrifying Australia. And the case is even stronger than it is in the US. So I'm just going to spend 15 minutes or so really just talking about how rooftop solar is the key to unlock a consumer-led electrification revolution, both in Australia and also more broadly. And I do apologize, it will be Australia-focused. Our work really focuses on that, but much of this applies around the world. Let's get into it. Right, so community electrification. I'll just, I'll go into a bit of why electrification. I'll start there, talk about what, what I'm talking about, what, it, what do we mean by it, the benefits, and then actually how do we get, get this done. I don't think I really need to explain to anyone here in this uh, in this room why we need, you know, to, to act quickly on climate. The urgency of this climate emergency we face is, is is fairly apparent at this stage. We need substantial action, and it needs to be really, really fast. That the, the steepness of that line um, of emissions reduction it just gets steeper every year, and we need to turn the curve. And to do that, to get to these substantial emission cuts fast enough. We want to start with proven solutions, technology that we've got, that we know we can deploy, um, and with, that we know will deliver the results we need. And that's, how, that's what's led us to, to electrification, to really just looking at electric appliances, switching them in, um, in place of existing fossil fuel appliances. And to be really clear, what, what, what we're looking at, what, more that supply side, really important, and there's been fantastic work in lots of, lots of spaces, lots of countries around the world, delivering wind, delivering big hydro in some places. Um, lots of countries have got big, big solar farms as well. And what, what we need to complement that is to look at the, the, much, the much smaller machines and appliances that we've got in our lives, in our homes, in our businesses. There's millions of them around the world. Um, and we need to switch out those, the petrol cars, the, the gas cooktops, for efficient electric alternatives. That's going to cut emissions, and the good news is it's also going to save money. More importantly, almost still, is that it's going to, it puts the power back in our community. This is something that, that gives us the power back in our, in our homes and in our businesses. We're back in control of our energy use, or in control really in a new way, actually, of, of our energy use. Um, and it's winning, it's winning that kind of transition so that it's both fast, it's effective, it cuts emissions, but it saves money. And it also shifts that power dynamic away from a big centralized energy system and back into, you know, well, well into the hands of, of, of people, democratizes it, as, as was mentioned earlier. More specifically, you know, what are we talking about? What am I talking about? What, what does this mean? We're looking at rooftop solar here in, in, in households, focusing, going to focus on households in this. So rooftop solar there at the top. Um, that's that's you know, local decentralized generation. Every building can uh, can well, pretty much every building can get solar panels, um, and it, and it's the, really is the cheapest way to generate power now. And particularly in Australia, it's the cheapest. Australia has the cheapest rooftop solar in the world. Um, so that that's what's unlocking the real value as well as the emissions reductions for for Australians and, and the rest of the world. We've then got those those familiar appliances around the house. So the cooking, your your cooktop that 
you know, the majority uh, in, in Australia certainly are gas, it's the case in a lot of places. Um, reverse cycle air conditioning, we're looking at you know, heating, cooling, how are we um, heating the air and the space in our homes. Um, over on that, the left-hand side, the hot water, another big user of, of, um, of energy. And also, I mean, cars, transport being a, a really also a huge, huge, obviously, area of, of energy, a big activity, big emissions reduction opportunity there. Um, some less familiar pieces in here may be around batteries. Not everyone has a battery at the moment. That's kind of coming. And then at the bottom, that smart energy device, sometimes called a home energy management system. They're all quite wordy kind of labels, but ultimately it's a way for you to control storing your solar in your battery, using as much solar as possible to heat up your hot water at the right time so that you can really maximize your benefits from that. That gives you know, people control in their hands, in their phones. Um, also allows people to, to just automate certain bits. It's the idea you can, you can kind of set uh, and forget you know, what, what, you, what, you, what you want from your home energy system. So on this electrification journey, this transition to really just swap in electric appliances where, the, where there's fossil fuel burning option, um, existing you know, cars, hobs, um, hot water heaters, brings a whole host of benefits. As I mentioned, the emissions reduction is really the kind of the primary motivation for getting into this space. But having opened it up, there's a real raft of, of ancillary benefits that come along with it. And I think for most people, the most, most effective message is the economics. You know, the, we've crossed a critical tipping point in scaling renewables around the world. And by that scalability, that, that modularity of solar panels, the millions that get um, cranked out of factory every year, um, has dropped prices so steeply that, you know, it's it just it is the cheapest form of generating power in, in most parts of the world now, and Australia particularly because of the the speed at which they've rolled out onto rooftops. And Australia recently crossed four million uh, rooftop solar installations, which is you know amazing. Um, one in three homes is now the cheapest rooftop solar uh, in the world here in Australia, which which means that those savings for households are magnified even further because you're paying even less for it paired with a climate that really has, has a huge amount of sunshine and a lot of electricity generation potential. And that's leading to between three and $5,000 a year of consumer savings. If you go all electric, put solar on the roof, um, you switch out every appliance, you know, households are saving between three and $5,000 a year on their bills. So we're seeing that actually, it's not just climate action, Electrification is also good for people's pocket. It's good for the cost of living crisis. Um, it's anti-inflationary. Yeah, there's a really good news economic story here as well. More than that, the whole energy system benefits. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna end up with an energy system that is cheaper to run. We're moving generation closer to demand in terms of electricity. We're removing a lot of other um, sources of energy that, you know, fossil fuels that. Um, uh, and, and all of that is going to, going to reduce costs for the broader system. There's l good local jobs in taking electric appliances into people's homes and installing them, in rolling out solar. You know, that, that's, those jobs are local in our communities. We need more people in those spaces. We need more skills in those spaces. But those are jobs that are, that are really close to you know, where people live, ultimately. We're not asking people to move um, off to work on a fracking site in the middle of nowhere. Um, we're not importing fossil fuels from abroad. These are kind of local jobs in every community around the world. Um, and that's a really good news again, economically. And then there's the health piece, which you know is, you know, often relegated to the bottom, but ultimately really important. We know that burning gas in your house, particularly, is really unhealthy, um, and the evidence for that has just got stronger and stronger in recent years. Switching out for efficient electrical alternatives is good for reducing asthma, particularly good for children for improving children's health. Um, so there's there's that other benefit as well. One further piece, which I think feels a little further away for some people, but is just that efficiency. And, the real, and, and I think that dispels some of the um, concerns that some people have around. We're going to need a, a million, you know, how much electricity generation we're going to need. The reality of the shift to electric is that we need a huge amount, huge reduction in the amount of energy um, to run, to provide those same services, the same quality of life. Apologies for this graph, it's a little bit busy, but the key thing is just the difference in size of those two, of the, the left-hand and the right-hand um, bars. Um, going electric saves all that money. We're looking at 75% you know, reduction in terms of the energy you need up front. A lot of that in the, the 
uh, red and black there is for transport. Transport in Australian households, this is, is based in an Australian household, is a huge component. It's, you know, it's about 70% of, of a household's energy consumption. And that, that is a big piece of it. And it's also about driving less. Australia is a particularly car dependent society, but you know, I think there's the, the good news from that is that we switch from petrol and diesel cars to electric cars and our energy use goes down rapidly as do our carbon emissions. And then alongside that, you know, it, within the house itself, we can see you know, heating, hot water, uh, and other electric consumption really in that order, the heating being the big piece. And that, that's, that's also similar around the world. But you know, we can see here that, that there's a lot of decisions and it, and it ends up being you know, a large proportion of, of a household carbon emissions are really made by decisions that, that are the result of decisions made around, you know, just around the kitchen table. You know, what, how, do we, how do we drive? What do we fill the, you know, how do we get there? How do we fill our car up? you know how do we generate power what do we how do we cook these are you know household decisions that we can switch to electric and i'll get on to the the financial benefits in a moment but they can really affect our emissions and our energy consumption so on on the economics this really is is the, the fantastic news of electrification is that you know, our energy bills have been going up um, inexorably for years um, that's the real result of inflation that's a result of normal economics by putting solar on the roof and switching to electric appliances, you hop onto that green line at the bottom of the um, of that graph. You, you're effectively buying 30 years of electricity upfront. There is an upfront cost. I'll, so I'll come back to that. So that's a barrier for some people and something that we need to work on. But it's lower than it's ever been before, that barrier. And by buying that upfront at about three cents a unit in Australia, um, a unit of power, you've locking that in for the next 30 years um, and in doing so you're just guaranteeing that you're going to be be saving money every year and as this graph shows with you know with inflation as well you're actually saving more money each year and i'd, I'd also add it's not that we're saying you have to do it all immediately i think you know our, our vision of what we really talk about is is that you know it's it's as appliances die or you know come to the end of their life or you're deciding to get a new car or um, you know, as you work through that process as a household, you just think, you know, you're switching it for electric at that point. So it's a gradual process. You're not necessarily going all electric tomorrow, but it's a case of, you know, getting solar when you've, you know, got a few thousand dollars to, to, to be able to afford it. Um, equally, you know, looking at getting a, an electric hot water heater when your, your gas hot water heater dies, you know, it's, it's a, you know, it's a 10 year plan for each household. Everyone's going at their own pace, but as a result, we all get to electric. Our emissions come down, and so do our bills. And just to dive into one of those appliances in more, more detail. Um, apologies again for the busy slide, but we've got a, a, a group. A, these are all hot water heaters. On the left, there's two left-hand options are both gas, LPG, so bottled gas, and then mains or reticulated gas in the pink. Then we've got two in the middle are electric resistive, just a really simple, straightforward, like an enormous kettle, uh, resistive hot water. Uh, with a big tank, and then the two on the right are heat pumps. Um, and so the, the the two yellow options are both are, are those resistive or the heat pump with solar as well. And you can see the the costs are just much lower with solar. But even without solar, that right hand blue column, you know, it shows that you're you're saving money with a heat pump compared to gas, even with even if you don't have solar on your roof. Um, so you know the, the the message is you know electrification saves money and with solar it's even better. You can see the figures there for for yourself. That's Australian dollars. The challenge is that we've got to do this again and again, um, you know, across every household, and we've got you know millions of appliances to change across Australia and far more around the world. Um, we're on our way there. These numbers are a little little behind. We've got you know four four hundred four million solar installations now in Australia but a huge amount of, of other appliances, cooking, hot water, space heating, uh, batteries and EVs as well. Uh, there's a lot of work to do. How do we do it faster and also make sure that it's fair? Um, we need to think about access. We need to be thinking about those barriers that people have, whether that's financial, that's crucial. You, you know, yes, you're gonna save thousands of dollars if you've got electric appliances and solar, but you do need to have the money up front. And whilst that's a barrier for less people than ever, it's still a barrier for, for a lot of people. Um, so providing people with, whether that's finance or whether that's subsidies uh, and grants, um, you know, government can step in to support that as well as others. 
there's practical challenges for for apartments people living in in strata social housing regional regionally the costs are much higher as well that raises a barrier incomes are generally lower um renters are also locked out of a lot of this because uh, they don't own the house there they're living in there's a, a big piece it's a small circle here on, on reform and the energy system there's a lot of detail behind that i won't go into it but happy to get into that in the questions um but we need to transform our energy system it's not ready for for this it's not ready for for consumer power really um and then in terms of action you know, we need to be thinking about trusted advice and installers giving people confidence in electrification in those appliances um, and really inspiring or driving that change briefly where we sit in um you know our vision at rewiring australia is to to see every australian have access to a solar electric home it's cheaper it's cleaner and it's fairer and we're also keen to promote this this abundance agenda you know the, the taking climate action can be it can be you know improve your bills it can improve your quality of life um it's not about compromising in this particular space at all it really is about you know um moving on and upgrading to an electric future and we do that through a range of ways we do research that's where my work's really focused research and deployment uh, i'll get into briefly our pilot that we're running we educate and work with communities to educate themselves and that all amplifies our advocacy our influence um uh on government policy and that's just a, a picture of uh, some of the communities the 50 or more that we actually now have across australia just briefly what this means in practice and how we do this we've just launched a really exciting pilot um on this and uh, on the south coast of new south wales um where, where i am speaking from in fact um and it started as a community initiative but it's really just a demonstration project for you know how we have the technology we can le we can leverage people power and build the social license and social you know buy into this and also demonstrate the economic benefits you know concretely in 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 a community so this um this pilot is is it really geographically confined to one postcode 2515 um and the goal is we're going to take 500 homes um across and to electric and upgrade them over the next couple of years just in summary it's yeah 500 homes we're going to be taking out gas appliances, putting them, putting in electric, giving everyone one of those smart devices so that they can monitor and control their energy consumption and learn from that research about how we take this further and faster across Australia and wider. The critical bit here, though, is how we go further and faster and do it well and safely and responsibly. And that's really about bringing, about bringing together households, those electric appliances that we know work and we've got the technology for, and demonstrating with installers you know, that they can deliver that to households and that's the that's one of the crucial pieces is we're really just the 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 pilot really is a, a real realistic you know um uh practice round it's, it's the dress rehearsal for doing this across the rest of the country we've got a whole host of, of research objectives i won't go into those now very happy to to go into them in the questions or, or offline later um and that's it for me. This is what we're looking to build as a, a solar electric community. Thanks very much.